So this is mostly what we do at work to scale up, or what we did over the past couple of years. We started using Graphite about slightly after I joined Booking.com, which is about January or February of 2012 is when we started using it. So just around two years now. Uh, for those of you who don't know what Graphite is, it's a time series database, it's a time series thing, MRTG, Cacti-like stuff. Uh, it's from one of our fellow competitor travel companies, but yay. It's written in Python, Apache licensed, and it's designed fairly well, except for the fact that it, we, we pushed it to well beyond its limits. <laughs> Uh, it consists of multiple separate daemons. The input format is extremely simple. And uh, almost, uh, you, there are no ACLs. It's not designed to have ACLs. It's completely non enterprise -y. It, That's a big win. <laughs> it has its own storage backend uh, called Whisper, which is like RRD, but with a few more features. If anyone follows uh, Jason Dixon's Twitter feed, he's just tweeted, tweeted a way to put up events into that thing, which is basically, here's the stuff that happened, put in a tag. So you can just say, we did a code rollout at this point for which, and say, store that as an event in the DB instead of trying to write a whole data point for that. He has good reasons for saying that. Uh, so Whisper Ceres is the is a new backend format that people are trying to put, that they're putting in, which is not yet stable at the moment, or at least wasn't when we tested it in October. Uh, there's a web application, it's a Django application, so, and if you're running CentOS, you'll need to upgrade up. You'll need to put in a new Python, basically. I wouldn't suggest upgrading the system Python. That's calling for a world of more pain than you want to take up. And of course, to get metrics from your servers to the database, to the system, you have an event-based daemon. There is something that runs on the server itself, not at your, there's no polar, basically. It's, it's completely passive. Database sends, uh, the collector sends data to the event, the, to the storage ends, storage nodes. They match input based on name and relay to one or more destination based on, you can either say, match it by, uh, based on, match this name with a regular expression, send it here, or you can just use a consistent hashing. Uh, the original production setup was one box, well, two boxes, RAID 1 plus 0 disk setup. And that works for our database, and we are fairly large in terms of how much writes we do, et cetera. Our DBAs are like, yeah, this should take the number of writes we do. We ran into the I.O. wall really, really fast. Spinning rust sucks. <laughs> and of course, Whisper is a lot of small individual files, so seek time dominates. How bad was it? Second day, nope, no can do. <laughs> 1 slash 24, fine. Well, OK, 250 boxes, one box. Second box, nope, we have lots of space, but it just can't keep up. Added, so we added a bunch more backends, still keeping this on spinning disk, and then we wrote a bunch of manual regular expressions to say, okay, if traffic comes from this host, send it here. And then of course, oh look, this box has got some more stuff on it. Oh, this is a MySQL server which sends out five times as many metrics as the rest of the system put together. So it becomes really hard to maintain that stuff and say, I'm going to keep disk I.O. and use edge consistent. We switched to S HP SSDs, 400 gigs. We got performance, and we didn't get as much as we needed. And for some odd reason, people keep telling me that when SSDs crash, they become read-only. Our servers just refuse to boot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me. It's just a disk crash, right? It's RAID 1. Doesn't matter, I am not booting. SSDs, they're simply not reliable. Naming conventions, we had the Wild West up front, and then we finally ended up saying we are going to use the sys.stars is for system metrics. Nobody else except a sysadmin is allowed to use that. If you want to do testing stuff, use a dot star. We want to know who you are, put your own username after that. Anything else, use whatever makes sense, that's still the policy. We really don't care. 
we started off running collect d on the nodes and uh, well oom is not your friend <laughs> we switched to diamond which is a python based application but didn't kill our boxes with using too much memory by the way the collect debug has been fixed so it was fixed a long time back but too late for us and uh, we have custom patches into diamond for internal metrics we also have a few patches that nowadays send um, alerts directly from diamond straight to nagas for alerting relaying we started with relays based on the cluster so two data centers one the cluster each for storage and then we ran into cpu bottlenecks there so we spun up more relay nodes we didn't org account for organizational growth we grow so this quarter we are adding as many hosts as we had when i joined and the growth rate is expected to grow even faster so cpu is still a bottleneck we ended up uh, putting sometime last year multiple relay instances on each host with the ha proxy doing tcp load balancing between them and of course because we needed failover pacemaker which is if we, if i was to do this again i wouldn't use the pacemaker thing <laughs> uh, and uh, finally last month we rewrote re 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 the dam relays in c for raw performance turns out python's regular expression matching and hashing functions are fairly bad uh, we saw cpu usage drop from 90% to about 10% yeah stats d we use it only with a couple of applications when we started using it turns out that it didn't do error handling it was just missing a, it was a four line patch but it was missing an error handling function so and of course pci would cause pci vulnerability or scanner would cause it to crash reliably debugging a crash that happens at 4 in the morning on sunday sometime between 4 and 5 is a pain at least if you would like to sleep at that point in time patching we patched it to handle errors that patch has been pushed to stats d it's been merged in a long time back first major use was about a year after we deployed stats d and that was to make sure that none of our partners who keep sending us updates about hotels and availability information can actually overload our systems that did let our on call systems sysadmins actually get some sleep at some point i spent la uh, last year's new year was basically debugging those problems why thank you very much priceline <laughs> <laughs> we use this only for metrics for a couple of applications then there is uh, so this are some other minor stuff that we do for tracking counts business metrics oh this is the interesting bit we have metrics for almost everything if you can express it as a number we will track it if you can't express it as a number we will find a way to express this as a number and then <laughs> <try it. laughs> at least we are we, well the last time we tried to do this was for developer and sysadmin performance metrics that got squelched quickly <laughs> but yeah pretty much anything that you can think of that you want to measure we will when did query start how long did a query take what was the page load time what was the render time if you have a number for it we will measure it but and so it turns out that graphite has a really nice api which means that the developers could do a lot of custom scripting that the homegrown system didn't really let them do well the homegrown system was written in about 2002 so it was it's missing features but and then they were writing graphite queries like sql which usually involves about 15 minutes of explanation saying not sql not sql not sql <laughs> not sql and uh, so we had one developer who decided oh look this is just store going to store data like uh, mysql one per row right so not too much maybe about 100 200 points but a lot of name metrics Well, that was about the second week of operation 5.3 terabytes of space which we didn't have it was a bit difficult because oh, what why is this box running out of space 15 minutes later why is this box running out of space again <laughs> yeah so sharding then we did we ended up with 
what, 40 or 50 regular expressions at some point, uh, when our cluster had grown to about 20 odd nodes just for the storage. Manually maintaining regular expressions became painful. 10 backend servers, two data centers, so that's 10 into 2, 20 nodes. And uh, plus all the relays, which also had to do this matching thing. And we didn't, we didn't have no idea who's going to create metrics when or whatever. That's a desirable thing. It's not a bug. We introduced hashing, consistent hashing, so data just gets distributed equally across all nodes. Adding a node, this makes adding a node really painful though. Graphite really doesn't support that yet. We switch from RAID 1 to RAID 0. It's replicated across multiple boxes anyway. And if you put in the same host name or IP twice, your data goes to two places even in the same ring. Mirror, we mirrored rings between databases, and then we wrote a bunch of, uh, one of my colleagues wrote a bunch of shell scripts to synchronize data between boxes and between data centers. Graphite tends to lose data points occasionally if you overload it. The philosophy is that this is time series data, it's going to get aggregated anyway, so an occasional lost data point is not a big deal. Until you come to my developers who go, well, we are sending in one data point every 10 seconds and we, can, we want to use the last three, average of the last three data points as a throttling mechanism for our scripts. So we don't overload the database replication. Uh, there is an open source project, Carbonate, which already does this, so you don't need to write your own shell scripts. And the, why we do we use SSDs? That's the average that we are doing. Uh, the, this graph was done in October. We have fixed the up and down thing, but that's 10,000 IOPS on average. Across, uh, I think that was about 20 odd boxes at that, 20, 25 boxes at that point. It was 30 boxes when I flew out and uh, to Australia, probably sometime next month, it will be about 40 or 50 boxes in each DC. 10,000 IOPS per server is a bit much for any sort of spinning disk. We did the maths, I think we ended up with a 50 or 60 node server to replace a single one. That may, because of course, if you lose SSDs every so often, you still want, uh, you try to put in spinning disk, we don't use that much space. Graphs, we use this thing crazy. Uh, the default graphs are time series. We use, we use the Graphite API a lot. We, I ended up writing a replication check that made the Graphite server cluster meltdown. It wasn't fast enough. So if anybody is trying to actually write stuff to pull from Graphite, which a few people recommend online, let me warn you that that doesn't scale very well either. We, so we have Spark lines, developers write their own dashboards, overhead displays, so crazy amounts of web traffic anyway. People use whatever charting libraries they like. We don't have an official standard. Uh, Nagios, we push data, from, we calculate data from Nagios for a few things in particular for a bunch of business metric stuff we do, experiments, A-B testing, whatever. And we have a bunch of passive checks that send data to Graphite and into Nagas. Current problems, we are saturating CPUs, at least with the relays, not so much the storage. We saturate disk IO. We write so much that reading from SSDs is slow. If someone knows faster SSDs, please. And these are, SS, uh, these are MLC Enterprise SSDs, which we are planning to replace anyway with SATA disk because they're so much cheaper, because they're dying under update load. A disk on average lasts between 12 to 18 months. We have replaced an entire cluster's worth of disks over the past month or two. That and replacing one server takes a full sysadmin's time for two days, just to make sure that all your data is synchronized. You can't, but, but again, that's a fault of our cluster setup, not so much in terms of human involvement as much as, is this working? Yeah, it's syncing, it's syncing, it's syncing. We have more interesting problems. The front end melts, melts down, so we have more than, a few thousand hosts and sys.star, click on it, 
tries to expand the tree and your laptop goes, hmm, hmm, nope, not rendering, not rendering. No, I'm still not going to render this, thank you. We had uh, problems upgrade, uh, recording data after upgrading Whisper, so we had to do a major rollback on that in a hurry. Adding shards is painful, and replacing SSDs is getting expensive. Note the theme, SSDs are expensive, <laughs> but we can't do without. And of course, people, anytime you want a, a graph, nah, let's not use Excel, just throw it at graphite. <laughs> because it's easier to use graphite than to use Excel, apparently. Because they will have to spend time learning Excel or a, your favorite spreadsheet of choice. Uh, even if it isn't time series data, there was at least one proposal to record the number of errors that our PCI scanner found. That's one record a day. And we don't really care about how many re uh, time series record of seeing how many errors it found unless they were the, unless they're critical ones. In which case, you want to fix it the next day. Things we are looking at more, second, we want to look at getting the rate of trend of changes to get us alerting, and uh, storage changes, obviously, because we don't want so much distributed stuff. So we just acquired eBody, so now we actually have Java people, so it might be HBase or Cassandra, or one of my developer teams is, who's doing business analytics has been playing around with React, so we might use that. Anomaly de detection, if we can, and if that doesn't cause servers to melt down. For anybody who's been playing around with the HC product stuff, it doesn't really scale. The, we put, tried pushing in about a week's worth of data, which melted the box down. Uh, tracking more business metrics, and we track a lot. We have a separate cluster for business metrics a separate setup for user metrics and one separate setup for the system metrics itself. And of course, finding people. That's a big challenge. If anybody wants to join, there's a link. Questions?